Welcome to Do You Have an Idea? For the last 12 years, we've been creating lots of entrepreneurship contents for you. And today, we're in the region's leading travel summit called Uzak Rota. And today with me is a very special guest. It's an honor to Thank be you. Uh, with you. Uh, Luis Cabrera, CEO of Lonely Planet. Yes, thank uh, you. And by the way, if you still don't know it, it's the world's largest travel guide brand. Millions of users, big revenues, and uh, and it all started from a small startup. Yeah, and we still like to think that we are, uh, we're a 47-year-old startup. And 47 years old. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about the story, how everything started? Yeah, it, it, it started by the founders, uh, Tony and Maureen Wheeler, the Wheelers. And they started just putting together in paper a guide of, uh, that was basically describing the Silk Road. And it was basically a trip on Asia. Uh, and they were basically putting uh, tips and tricks for, for people to travel on, on the cheap, basically. It was on the, on the budget side. And it, it, it eventually started growing and growing. And there's, there's a great podcast about it that you should be looking at, where Tony himself is describing how he started, how he sold his first book and how he grew the company from being two people to 200 people and he was uh, based in Melbourne and then he was bought by the BBC in London. That was in 2003 and then and then the new ownership, the company that I work for, uh, bought it in 2013 and now it's based in America. Yes, we reach hundreds of millions of people every year either by our guidebooks or our digital properties or our forums, our apps. So we, we, we have a very diverse product offering today. And uh, one of the biggest tricks of uh, big companies, as you know, now the trend is to have entrepreneurial vibes, yeah. to still have a startup vibe. Yeah, yeah. And as the CEO of this giant now, uh, how do you manage this? How do you keep this startup vibe? Uh, it, it, it is a challenge and it's a great question. And inside our company, we don't, we don't lack ideas. Ideas are always on the table. And when you have many ideas, the problem is, which ones do you choose to do first? And we cannot shut down our website, for example, and then build a new feature. We need to keep our website up and keep our digital properties and build it on the side and then try to incorporate it. So it brings a different challenge. If you're a startup, you, you're, you don't have anything to, to maintain. And we have found that uh, we have a matrix that helps us identify what is it that we should be focusing on. And on one matrix you have alignment with our corporate mandate or alignment with the core. And then on the other axis is how much you're solving people's problems. So if you are able to solve friction for a traveler and you can align with our corporate mandate, then you have a winner. That's a no-brainer, we should be doing it. Sometimes we find features that align very well with our core, but it's not, it's not solving anyone's problem. That's vanity, we kill that. Some other times we find ideas that solve people's problems and solve tremendously uh, travelers' friction, but we're not very aligned with to it because we're not an airline, for example. In those cases, that's when we need to decide if we're gonna build it or we're gonna partner. So we use these two matrix and it's a very simple chart to identify how to deal with new ideas. Wow, actually this is a great tip. While, while I'm listening to you, I'm thinking oh, obviously on an entrepreneurial thing and actually it's an amazing matrix I'll for send, entrepreneurs. I'll send, I'll send you the, the image and you can just insert it in the... Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. I mean, we should definitely do it for, for them. But also then uh, while you were telling about yeah. this core, yeah, yeah. Actually, that brings us to another important thing of an entrepreneur. Because yeah. as you know, when you first start up a company, you don't know where to attack and maybe you lose your core. So this yeah. core word, how mm -hmm. do you identify it? And how would an entrepreneur, sh how should an entrepreneur identify that? Oh. Then we can put the matrix obviously yeah, on top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Corporate, well, when you're working in a corporation, it's really easy to, to find that corporate alignment, right? If you're a retailer, it needs to be something in retail. When you're a startup, you can quickly identify, you need to make sure that you're, as I said, make sure that you have your first exit covered, which is solving real friction. Make sure that you're solving someone's problem. Otherwise, you're building solutions looking for a problem. And then try to focus on one or two use cases. And that's probably the biggest challenge of an entrepreneur because sure. it's really easy to cripple your own product because you keep adding features and features and features and then you end up having something that doesn't solve one particular big problem. So focus and, and resistance and resilience, I would say that's probably my be the best strategy just to 
stay focused on your mission, on what your big idea is, and don't get distracted adding more features to your product just because you you have a, a, a commercial opportunity. Sometimes revenue can be toxic. The, the concept of toxic revenue is the entrepreneur that has a great idea and then a corporation comes and say, well, if you change five things of your product, we'll I'll, 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 I'll give you $1,000. And people, just because they want $1,000, they, they end up crippling their own product. And then, and then they end up having something completely different from what they started building. To identify your core as a startup, um, you don't have a lot of corporate alignment yet because you you, you're working for yourself. So you need to make sure, number one, that you are solving real consumer problems or company problems. Make sure that you identify a problem and you're focused on solving it. Don't create solutions looking for a problem. And number two is stay true to your core idea and to your core use cases, meaning avoid toxic revenue. The concept of toxic revenue is when you start accepting money in exchange of changing and modifying your own product to satisfy one particular client. Because oh, so a client comes in and... Uh, yeah, yeah, and, I, I, and that's when most of the startups lose their mojo or lose their core, and then they end up building a product that was not exactly what they wanted at the beginning. And you end up building something custom for one client. So it, it is a challenge. If you have the capacity to resist the urgency and not fall in the trap of toxic revenue, I think you will be very, very, you will be very soon finding your core. Perfect. And actually, uh, since we've found you, I mean, the whole travel industry flows uh, in yeah. a way on Lonely Planet. Yeah. And uh, what trends can you tell us? And that will be tips, idea tips for entrepreneurs yeah. in the travel industry. What's going on now and where should the entrepreneurs target? I would, um, I would suggest that you look at the at the flow deal. If you look in the five, in the last five years, how many startups were created in the travel space? About 1,500. And you start identifying what are the themes that most of these companies are trying to get into. You'll find in the travel space a lot of companies doing something around locals and connections and because that's a growing consumer appetite and trend, people are moving away from a destination-driven vacation to an experience-driven vacation. So people don't care that much about the place, they care more about the experience that they're gonna have. And it's gonna be about connecting with locals, food, adventure, it can be a lot of things. It's no longer just sitting on the pool and then just having a beach and a cocoa. It's, it's, it's true, about true. doing something. So a lot of companies were emerging on the local side, on the lo enabling local connections. Then another growing trend is on VR and AR. And I think that's gonna be the future of travel. As people get more conscious about their carbon footprint, and also as people are deciding more, or taking care more of their dollars, VR and AR technologies will enable us to travel even when you can't travel. And that's something, that's a kind of a mind-blowing concept yeah, to me. Yeah, different industry. <laughs> there, there's gonna be a moment in, in which you're gonna put a headset or whatever the, the, the form factor is, and you'll be able to go into the jungle in Brazil and hear and smell and feel and without, without leaving your, your bedroom. So I see a lot of innovation in that space. It obviously starts with 360 videos and it starts with augmented reality, but that will quickly evolve and we're just waiting for the big guys like Apple or Magic Leap or any of these other big companies to finally come up with a product that is gonna be commercially available and that's where we're gonna start seeing a lot of use cases uh, trying to fill in that, that gap. And since we got into like, different trends, another yeah. interesting trend is, as we can all see now, we have, it didn't exist, now we have influencers. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're everywhere, they're like a business of their own. Yeah. And I would say, with Lonely Planet, it's probably very connected. Yeah. Uh, do you ever touch with them, or do you uh, have different things to help these influencers? Yeah. And actually, they, they are, in a way, entrepreneurs, uh, solo they are entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. They're, they're uh, small business owners at the end of the day. Yes, we about 10 months ago, we bought a company called Trill. It was a startup based in New York, and they develop a technology that helps influencers to monetize their content by applying some visual algorithms that I quickly identify if a picture 
it's a hotel, a restaurant, or an activity, and another algorithm makes a link to the reservation system, therefore shrinking the distance or minimizing the distance between inspiration and transaction. Because people get inspiration on Instagram, but exactly. then, then you just get and inspired, then, yeah, and, and then, then you need to go to, some, <laughs> to another place and then look for your travel, then book. These guys, what they did is, directly from Instagram, or you can grab a picture and you click it and it all automatically knows where that picture was taken and what, what is this about, and then I can send people to the reservation system. Perfect. So yeah. that, that is one thing. And we, we bought that company because we're gonna use that same technology. It was an asset purchase, and we're gonna relaunch our Pathfinders program. Pathfinders is people that are writers, bloggers, influencers, Instagrammers, all around the world that want to be associated with Lonely Planet. And now we're gonna enable them to give us all of their content and monetize their content through our channels. So I'm gonna open my millions of users uh, a year for them, so I'm gonna, and hopefully we'll be able to exchange audiences as well. Okay. That's, a, that's a big game, uh, and that's a big bet After in next year. This one, I want to be a travel influencer <laughs> as well. I mean, it's, because connecting with your huge uh, database, yeah. that, that will be a yeah. dream. Yeah, we sit on the largest data repository on Earth. We have more than two million pages, and we have hundreds of thousands of POIs, 20, 20, 22,000 destinations covered with narratives and descriptions and everything. Now we need to be able to unlock that value through digital channels and influencers is gonna be a big part of it. How would this influencer trend evolve? What do you think? Um, I think consistent with what I told you early on, on connections, I think these influencers eventually will become like personal tour guides on demand. So that's kind of the ultimate vision so that we can enable travelers to use our app, look at our great content, and then eventually get in touch with a local. And that's one of these influencers. And it's gonna be like a Uber for tour guides. So you're at that destination, you can see who's around based on your specific needs and interests. So I'm a foodie, so I don't, I don't, I don't wanna go to expedition or any adventure, I just want to stay in the bars and in the food, in, in the foods in a particular city. I can pull up my phone, select the Pathfinder, and then uh, connect with the local. So, uh, Luis, since I've found uh, the CEO of a billion dollar company with me, I would like to ask an important thing that entrepreneurs sometimes find difficulty in, like a managerial skill, and that is actually managing bad times. I'm sure you'll have loads of ups and downs, like an entrepreneur, over the day you have crazy days, you have good moments, and then the second minute you have a bad news and you go down and up. How do you manage this? Because uh, it's a very important managerial skill. Yeah, yeah, dealing with adversity is, is quite, a, it's quite a skill. And honestly, what you need to focus on is on your product, on your users, and resist. Normally, uh, the, the way we deal with this is by talking. Don't write angry emails, ever. Never, never, never. Don't write long emails. If, if you, I, I'm still waiting for someone to develop a plugin as if you're typing an email and if it's longer than four paragraphs, it should prompt you, stop it. Like Twitter, so Pick up the like... phone or call that person, do a video conference. Talk with people. I would say that, that, that little, very simple tip would have avoided me so many troubles in my young age uh, as an entrepreneur. When, because being right doesn't give you the, the right to be angry. Use that being right as a positive and to influence others and talk, talk. And you need to compromise many times. So you need to compromise and you need to communicate. And if you keep doing those two things, you will be able to deal with adversity positively. That's an amazing tip for entrepreneurs. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, Luis it's a Caber. pleasure. I had so many more questions. Yeah. But, uh, Let's amazing. do more of this. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. I mean, amazing vision, amazing company. We had uh, Luis Cabrera from Lonely Planet, CEO of Lonely Planet. We had loads of tips, especially for travel entrepreneurs. Hear more about more entrepreneurship content. Please subscribe. And till the next video, goodbye. <laughs>